welcome back to SEMA's podcast, Y'all Ready for This, where we talk about all things emergency preparedness to make sure that you and your family are ready for any type of natural or man-made disaster right here in Chatham County. This week, I am so excited to be joined by our office manager and fellow disaster movie enthusiast, Stephanie Cox. Stephanie, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. And our subject matter expert is the biggest disaster movie nerd that I know, and he is the loving SEMA director, Dennis Jones. Dennis, thanks for being our subject matter expert. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Well, so I've kind of already dropped the hint on what we're talking about. You guys, we are talking about disaster movies this week. Uh, There's a lot of misconceptions that come into disaster movies of, can this actually happen in real life? What's fact? What's fiction? We're going to dive into a wonderful disaster movie today and talk a little bit about what happened in the movie so that you guys have a synopsis if you've never seen this one and also talk about really what could happen or what could not happen when it comes to those types of disasters. So Stephanie, can you tell us what our movie is this week and give us an overview of what happened? Of course. So this week we're talking about the movie Twister set in Oklahoma in 1996. Twister follows a a team of storm chasers as they rush to release an informational tool uh, to gather storm data into a tornado. The tool is named Dorothy. The storm that Helen Hunt's and Bill Paxton's characters are chasing kicks up five different tornadoes that they chase in an attempt to release Dorothy in order to learn more about tornadoes. The movie is not short on special effects, if you've ever seen it. And in the theaters, during the infamous cow scene, or is it scenes? I mean, was it one cow? Was it two? Who knows? Many moviegoers tracked the cow across the screen as it went by. The film itself raises many questions on what to do and what not to do during a tornado, especially in an area where storm shelters are not readily available. Do you run from the tornado? Tie yourself to pipes in a pump house? lie in a ditch, stay in your vehicle, what do you do? By the end of the movie, the Dorothy team released her into the storm, love was rekindled, and the main character survived the storms with only minor injuries. The movie itself also spun off several urban legends, including one about moviegoers at a drive through watching the movie, and having a real tornado come ripping through the screen in the middle of a tornado scene. Um, there was a tornado, but moviegoers were watching a different movie that day with Twister scheduled to play later in the evening. And also, fun fact, there has been talk of a Twister reboot coming soon. So there you have it. That's our recap on Twister. Wow. Stephanie, one, that was an incredible recap. Thank you. Absolutely glorious. Um, As a fellow disaster movie enthusiast, I am just so in love with your recap. Um, But I can't say that I'm a huge fan of Twister because I only saw it for the first time this year. Um, I have apparently been in other disaster realms. I'm not sure. Um, But it just truly captivated my heart. And I can't believe that it took me until 2021 to watch this movie. Uh, But like I said earlier, it leaves a lot of questions. What's fact? What's fiction? And Dennis, you're going to help us dive into these questions. So first things first, the cow scene. I mean, it's infamous at this point. I mean, is it one cow? Is it two cows? Stephanie's already brought up the question. My question to you, can cattle or any sort of outdoor animals, can they really fly around in a tornado, Dennis? Well, let's talk about the power of a tornado. Um, Tornadoes are very, very powerful storm systems. Uh, we've seen where they've destroyed buildings. They picked up entire boats from marinas and they set them well inland. Um, they carve paths of destruction, you know, sometimes miles wide and miles long. Uh, so livestock, fortunately, they generally have a very well established sense of weather related dangers that are approaching them. And they have a tendency to get out of the path of an approaching storm or an approaching weather event that has a significant issue uh, that could have a significant issue to their safety. Uh, But for some reason, if they're not able to do that, a tornado certainly has the power and the potential to be able to pick up livestock and move them along the tornado path. So again, tornadoes are very powerful systems. Uh, If they can destroy a a brick building, they can certainly pick up livestock and, uh, and move them to another location. So here in Georgia, especially with hurricanes and stuff, we know that 
we need to take care of our domesticated animals, so our dogs or cats or hamsters or snakes, whatever. We pack those up and take them with us. But how do you prepare for livestock and other large outdoor animals during severe weather like that? Well, uh, for livestock specifically, I mentioned earlier that they have uh, an innate sense at recognizing when there's weather related danger and they tend to, to protect themselves. Um, however, uh, there are times where they just simply can't do that. Um, it, you know, for large pastures, it's perfectly okay to take your cows, your horses, and to let them out in, in the large pasture because they are going to do everything they can do themselves to protect themselves. Um, you should never leave them in a barn. You certainly don't want to, to, to trap them inside of a structure that could possibly fall on them. Um, they could be severely injured from that. Uh, if you have smaller animals such as chickens or rabbits, uh, you know, make sure that their homes are as storm ready as you can make them and they're able to withstand high winds. Uh, most damage to buildings and animals come from wind and flying debris. Uh, if you have any heavy farm equipment around, you want to make sure that they are either undercover or they're tied down if you can possibly do that. Uh, you know, it's also a good idea to have some type of, of branding or tagging, especially on your livestock, so that if a tornado were to come through and take out a portion of the fence, if you've got those animals in large pasture, there's a tendency for them to be able to get out. So that allows you to easily identify, uh, you know, any of your, uh, your animals that possibly get out of their enclosure uh, in, in a tornado event. It just helps you to, uh, to make sure that you can identify them if they are off your property. And then, you know, year round, some of the good ideas to, uh, to just make sure that you're checking up on fencing and gates, your corrals, other enclosures, just to make sure that they're maintained in good repair. Uh, and, uh, you know, check them before each storm season and just go ahead and make those repairs before storm season starts. And that's, uh, that's some good practices for you to, uh, to kind of do annually. And again, during a tornado threat event, it's best to just let them free roam in a large pasture. Wow, that is excellent information to know. Um, who knew that cows could actually fly around in a tornado? Twister, you got that one right. We'll add that to the fact file. All right, let's switch gears from livestock and to uh, away from our animal friends and onto our human friends. Uh, Stephanie talked about drive-in theaters and other outdoor activities that they uh, highlighted in this movie, Twister. Uh, what should you actually do if you were at a drive-in theater or, or an other outside event and there is a threat of a tornado? Do you want to actually stay in your car and continue watching a movie like they did in Twister? Well, in general, you, you want to try and get inside of a sturdy structure. You want to get as low as you can. Uh, the basement or the ground level of the lowest floor of a sturdy building offers the greatest safety. You want to put as many walls between yourself and the outside as possible and certainly avoid windows at all costs. Uh, in homes or public buildings, uh, I mentioned this, go to the basement, go to an interior room such as a closet, a bathroom or an interior hall on the lowest level. Close all the doors to the hallway for greater protection uh, and you certainly want to protect yourself from flying debris. Uh, you know, take some pillows, take some heavy blankets with you. Uh, some smaller children, you may want to put a bicycle helmet on them just to protect their head. Uh, and again, it's very important to stay away from those exterior doors, stay away from windows, stay away from those outside walls, and can't reiterate uh, enough how important it is to make sure that your head's protected and other components of your body. All right. So... In the movie, one of the storm chasers is in his vehicle. He doesn't get out to find, you know, a safer area. And he gets sucked up into the tornado and he becomes impaled by an object. And I think, sadly, he, he doesn't make it. Um, like the bad guys, they, they all die at the end. So there's a spoiler alert on that one. But um, if could that really happen? Can your vehicle get sucked up into the tornado? And if you are in your vehicle, what should you do? Well, I mentioned earlier that, that you know, tornadoes are, are very, very powerful systems. They're extremely risky uh, to be in a car. Um, we've seen countless times where a tornado has overturned vehicles, including semi-trucks. So it's very risky to be inside of a vehicle. There's no safe option when caught in a tornado if you're in your vehicle, um, just slightly less dangerous ones. So if it's at all possible, you want to try and seek shelter in a sturdy building or underground or even in a ditch. Um, I know people say, oh, I'm going to get out of my car and get into a ditch. 
Well, the ditch is lower than the roadway. The ditch is lower than where your car is. And there's a, a very high probability that that tornado, if it comes over the top of you, is really going to stay at ground level and just go right over the top of you, even if you're in a ditch. So if you can't do that, um, you know, get noticeably lower than whatever level of the roadway you are. Uh, we want you to get out of your car and you, we want you to lie in that area and cover your head with your hands. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Dennis. Um, I found myself screaming at television screen a lot um, during this movie because there are so many things um, that I have taught, that I have heard you teach, Dennis. And one of them was they parked their truck underneath of an overpass. And I have always heard you do not park your vehicle underneath of an overpass during a tornado. Can you explain to our listeners today why that was a horrible idea, Twister staff and Twister cast? Come on. Yeah, you, you know, bridges, concrete bridges, they, they give a false impression of safety. Uh, you know, you're only covered on the top half of your body. You're not covered with the rest of your body. So also when a, when a, uh, a tornado comes through, it creates a tunneling effect. So the winds tend to be even higher underneath the bridge than they are, uh, you know, are surrounding the bridge. Um, so with that effect, you get very, very high winds, higher winds than you may normally have outside of of that underpass, uh, you still have flying debris and you don't really have much protection other than what's above you uh, to protect you from that flying debris. And then again, we've also seen in very strong tornadoes where bridges have collapsed. So you have that potential for the bridge to fall on top of you. So we do not encourage you to get, uh, to get underneath an overpass. We want you to get to a lower level getting underneath an overpass and some people have crawled up to the top of the overpass, you're actually elevating yourself. Uh, we don't want you to do that. We want you to get low. So in the movie, Dennis, um, we see the two main characters, they run into a shed and uh, they happen to look around and it's a farm shed. So there's axes and, you know, sharp equipment all around. And thankfully they run out of there because they realize it's not the best idea. Um, so they end up in a pump house and they tie themselves to a set of pipes. We're not sure what kind of pipes we were assuming water. Um, but how smart is it to tie yourself to something? You know, is that a good idea or no during such a severe weather event? Well, it, it was a very good scene in the movie, um, a very good ending to the movie. Uh, but I mentioned a few times that tornadoes are very powerful forces of nature. If you're in the heart of an EF5 tornado, which was depicted in the film, it's highly unlikely that a leather strap is going to keep you anchored to any kind of stationary item. And it's most probable that you would not survive the sheer force of the pressure and also the tremendous amount of debris that is being thrown around. All right, thank you, Dennis, for all of your information about this pretty fantastic movie. Um, we will say that disaster movies as a whole uh, are typically really fascinating to look at, really exciting. They have these wonderful scenes, as Dennis just mentioned. But they're not always the most factual. So please keep that in mind as you are enjoying these disaster films like all of us do on a consistent basis. Um, if you guys are interested in hearing more about disaster movies and this type of content, let us know. You can head to our website at chathamemergency.org and click on the podcast link and you can fill out our survey and let us know what disaster movies you'd like us to talk about and what's fact and what's fiction. I mean, this is a perfect opportunity to learn a lot of really great content. Thank you so much to my co-host and our fabulous subject matter expert for joining us this week. We will see you guys next time when we start our hurricane season discussion and bring back the dream team again to talk about hurricane decision making. We'll see you then. Thanks, guys.